Good afternoon, everyone. I've got a great big light right there. So I'll just stand here like this. Is everyone okay with that? <laughs> Sunglasses, I think I need that. Um, so those of you up the back, feel free if you want to come down a bit further, that's okay, I don't bite and I'm sure the people at the front don't either. Um, you might have seen some things on your chairs. Yes, they are for you to take. Um, and I do actually have a giveaway at the end, um, but it's only gonna be the people that are down the front. So <laughs> if, if that's any if that's any consolation, you know, there might be a lucky seat closer to the front, um, but if you feel much more comfortable up the back, I'm all good with that as well. So good afternoon, everyone. I've got this beautiful spot just after lunch um, where you're all a little bit sleepy, um, but hopefully happy and full. So my name's Rebecca Rogers. I'm a principal consultant at Step 2 Designs, and I have a confession to make. I'm an intranet nerd. So I'm, I'm not a tech nerd, uh, so I know there's plenty of those in the room, um, and there's plenty of other great tech nerd speakers um, here at Drupal South. So I'm not gonna talk about technology today. I'm gonna talk about intranets. So hopefully you're all in the right spot, and you may have found something cool on your seat. So just hang on to that, and I'll reveal at the end. Okay, so hands up anyone who is responsible for the intranet in their organisation. Oh, half of you. Okay, that's, that's a good sign. Hands up if you don't know what an intranet is and you thought you might come along and just find out. Okay, excellent. All right, so what I'm going to talk about this afternoon is the present and future of intranets. So presently at the moment we've got a bit of a mixed bag. We've got some great intranets, we've got some new intranets. Um, yes, believe it or not, there are some people out there who still don't have an intranet in their organisation. We've also got those sites that feel a little bit like my house. I call it a renovator's delight. Um, that, that actually means that, you know what, you've got lots and lots of possibilities and I'll show you lots of those this afternoon. There's those intranets that have grown organically over time. That's a nice way of saying people have dumped lots of stuff in there and now you've got to try and figure out how to make it better. Anyone got one of those? Yeah, good. <laughs> and seen them, good to see. Okay, so I've checked that you're, I've checked that you're all awake this afternoon. Um, and then there's those intranets that are actually meeting staff needs. Now, if anyone's got one of those, come up and see me at the end. And because we like looking at them. Um, but sometimes they're taken for granted by staff. And then we've got those beautiful intranets that actually look to the future and think about great user experience. Now, you guys are used to great user experience, right? Because you design websites. You don't have any of that horrible stuff that goes on in the enterprise, like someone saying, oh, sorry, we've got no budget or resources because we've given all of that to the web team. <laughs> so you'll be okay, won't you? You're just one person. You're smart. You'll be all right. I'm sure you've got lots of skills. You don't need a visual designer. You don't need an information architect. You don't need a BA um, or any of those other things because you can do it all, can't you? Sound familiar? So those of you that, that think this afternoon as I'm showing you lots of great examples in, in the intranet space, and you're thinking, really? Is that all she's got to show me? Just remember, we're in the enterprise. We don't have those beautiful big budgets. We, don't, we have lots and lots of complexities. We also have lots of senior executives who think, really, an intranet? Isn't that just a dumping ground for documents? And every now and again, we'll throw some comms up on the homepage. Hmm, keep that in mind. So with that, let me jump to the future. For me, a future intranet looks great. Yes, it's very sad. Intranets aren't as beautiful as websites, I'm really sorry to say, but they're getting better, so it's a good sign. A key part of how you work in your day. So does your intranet actually help you with your day? Or is it somewhere to go as a last resort? 
directly supporting your core business, thinking about what it is you do, how you work, what are those frustrations that you have, and how can we actually improve on those? Enhancing knowledge management. So thinking about contact centres as a great example. Um, we mentioned banks earlier today. Um, Harriet talked about banks this morning. Um, and those of you in a banking environment will look at Barclays a bit later. Now, the thing with knowledge management is, how do you know that your staff in your contact centres are actually giving out the right information? There's high turnover. How do they know the answers to the questions? What information are you giving them? And in what format is that in? Is it easy for them to get the answer to the question? Or do they have someone on the phone and they're thinking, oh dear, I've got to trawl through five pages before I might find the answer. It's just much easier to Skype my colleague that's sitting next to me who's been here for a year and a half and she might know. And provides anywhere productivity. We're all used to these by now. And you're doing great stuff in the web space. But how many of you can access more than email on here from the enterprise? So how many of you can access your intranet from your mobile device? One, two, sorry, I've got lights. Oh, okay, good. Is it your whole intranet? And it's really, really small, and you've got to do this? <laughs> Don't laugh, it's true. Or is it those bite-sized bits that you need on the go? Like your organisation wants to push you some news. You may or may not have time to read it. We're seeing that people are reading it. Readership's going up by 50% on comms being delivered to people's mobile phones. Now, you know why? Because you check Twitter first, you check your personal email, you might check your work email, and when all else fails and you're really bored waiting for the bus, you'll then check your organisational news. So, yes, that's true. Sorry for all the comms people in the room, if I have any. <laughs> but it's true, they're reading it. It might be last, but they're reading it. Um, also, think about the functionality that you need on a phone when you're out and about. Let's jump into the future now. So, let's have a think about your first day in a new organisation. Your security pass is waiting for you at the front desk. Now, you might go, yeah, okay, this doesn't happen everywhere. Your login, your phone, your mobile, everything's all set up and waiting for you. You've got a beautiful shiny desk and it's all there ready to go. Is that reality? <laughs> I'm getting lots of, lots of head shaking here. You jump in and there's a task list waiting for you on the homepage of your intranet, telling you all the things that you need to do today. Because you arrived and whilst everything was set up, you also had a little sticky note on your desk from your manager saying, really sorry, had to go to a two hour meeting, just make yourself at home. Brand new organisation, mm. what am I gonna do now? There you go. Making connections, so you're brand new, you might be a little bit shy, you don't know who to talk to. So you jump on Morris, who is this uh, intranet, and you actually find out other people that are like you, that are in your area, might have similar interests. So while your manager's in that two-hour meeting, you might want to pop by and say hi. You can keep track of client projects on the intranet. And Morris is also available on your phone plus all of your other enterprise apps. So let's jump forward a little bit. And you're now in your second week and you come along to Drupal South. And it's time to go home. Everyone's very sad, but you wanna catch up on what's been going on back in the office. So you're at the airport waiting for that flight that's not gonna be delayed because it's a long weekend and you decide that actually you're going to have a bit of a scroll through the different products because you're only a week in and you're not really familiar with the organisation yet. You can actually see all of those client products online and a little overview of each of them. Everything about that product in one spot. 
you don't have to go to different systems, including real-time information. Now, because you are new, and previous organisations, this had been really hard, but booking flights and accommodation was easy. Not only did you have information about the best restaurants in the area that Google had to supply for you, but you also had an insight from the people in the organisation who work in Melbourne and actually know those secret coffee places that they don't put online. So, it's now time to get on your plane. Now, anyone feeling a little bit like this? It's not a dream. People are doing it. Um, winners of our Internet Innovation Awards are proving it. So, let me jump to the fundamentals. Let's let you know how you can actually do this and what makes a great intranet. So, many, many years ago, we started with the five purposes of an intranet. Clients would often say to us, so, why do we have an intranet? Isn't it just about comms and content? Well, actually, no, it's not. Believe it or not, I still have some people, often IT uh, experts, saying, oh, an intranet, that's just about comms and, and content, right? That BI stuff, all of that, that's not the intranet, that's something else. Let me tell you more. So let's start with something that we all know well, content. Now, someone somewhere said, hey, let's have an intranet. And someone started piling content in and more content in and more content in until one point you looked at it and went, oh dear, I can't find what I need, search doesn't work, navigation doesn't make sense. I'm getting a few nods in the audience. What we want to get to is delivering usable and valuable information. I'm working with a bank at the moment that actually said to me, Rebecca, you've done the research and you've come back with all these great information needs um, from staff within the organisation. But you know what? We've got all that on our intranet at the moment. So, thought you were the expert. How are you actually helping us again? And I said, well, you may have all that information on your intranet at the moment, but how is it, how is it presented? Is it buried in a PDF document that is 12 pages long at the bottom in small text? Or is it inline in the page? Does your search work? Um, have you thought about presenting information in the way that people want to consume it? A great example is, do you want to have to log into a HIS system to find out how many leave days you've got? No. Can't you just present it on the page and give me a link to actually click on to book my leave? that takes me automatically into the HRIS system without any clunky interface, that'd be really nice. So, one of the fundamental points around content is to provide that trusted information source. So, thinking about an authoring community, how do you actually get your authors to update content? It can be a challenge, and I know we've had some talks around content strategy. So, this is a great example here from the International Monetary Fund where they have brought content from a number of different systems into the one place. So, this is a page all about Argentina. Now, this is where one of their offices is. You can actually get all the information coming from different core systems into the one page. So, it's pulling more than just static content. It is more engaging because it actually meets the user needs. Providing that enterprise front door, thinking about rather than structuring your intranets around organisational lines, and hopefully there's not many of those left these days, um, providing a front door into important relevant information. So this is an example from Mayo Clinic um, where they have everything relating to a particular topic in one place. Now, this is fantastic. Anything in relation to outpatients is all in one spot. This is for doctors, for nurses, um, and for, for other staff. So rather than them having to go and look and trawl through the whole intranet to find a policy in one place, to find the instructions on, on how to actually admit an, outpa an outpatient, um, it's all here. 
I talked about presenting the information in a way that users want to see it. If you have a look here, you have 59 leave days in a nice big box. How cool is that? So now you can go and leave. Simply apply and off you go. You didn't have to go into any other system. From here, you can also see the leave policy. So you can see how many leave days you're able to accrue at any one time. Can you actually save up for that three month jaunt in America or in Europe? Or is your limit only 40 days? Another, another great example of this is um, something that we're designing for a bank at the moment where they're only allowed 40 days of leave maximum to accrue at any one time. After 40 days, they're asked nicely by their manager to actually take some leave. Various reasons. So what we're actually doing is using colour, um, both on the user side and the leader side, to actually show that, you know what, your leave balance is in red. So if your manager hasn't spoken to you, they're going to do it soon. Or if it's in orange, then you probably might want to think about taking leave. Now, for those of you that might have 30 or 40 staff, being able to see those coloured dots in one big long view um, and know quickly at a glance how many conversations you have to have and potentially how many people the organisation's going to make you put on leave at any one time is kind of useful. And I'm really sorry for the, um, the fuzziness of the slides. I promise they're really clear on here. So anyone that, <laughs> anyone that wants them, um, I'm happy to, happy to send them through. So law firms putting everything regarding a precedent in one spot. And grouping content by topic, it seems really simple. But how many intranets aren't doing this? Thinking about how users group and label in information. Can't tell you how many times people have said to me, Rebecca, you've designed lots of intranets. You don't need to do any research. Can't you just come and design one for us? It'll be okay. Now, I can't do that, I'm sorry. Um, even for a university, and I've done lots of university intranets, but you know what, they're all different. So using those user-centred design principles to understand how people group and label information, I still get, I still design IAs that I don't like. And you know what? That doesn't matter because they're not for me. I don't need to use them. I just need to create them. So when I get an internet, coming, internet manager coming to me or a CEO coming to me going, but Rebecca, that label is really bad. I can change it if you like. Let's do some user testing on that new label and let's see. Oh, they can't find it anymore. Hmm. Okay, then maybe we'll go with yours. But I don't like it. So, speaking of banks, how many of you think that this is a great scenario? I particularly like the 50% decrease in complaints relating to staff knowledge. Oops. Isn't that the same as um, government departments close your ears? Isn't that the same uh, when you call a government department and you get one answer and you call back again, hoping the answer might be different? Okay, so jokes aside. Um, Barclays Bank, they started with a mobile first environment. They had lots of problems with their frontline staff actually not having good access to that knowledge information that allowed them to answer their customer questions accurately the first time. So they created MyZone, um, which quickly and easily enabled their staff um, to view the knowledge in a way that made sense to them. After designing this, they then moved to a tablet version and a desktop version, but this was rolled out first. So it's just another display of information. Now again, some of you might be sitting here going, but we, we do that on the web all the time. But how many of you have content written specifically for mobile on your intranets? Getting a couple of, if anyone does, again, come see me at the end. 
okay, so I should get moving. Communication. Now, we all know this one. How many people are overwhelmed by email? Yep. Uh, how many organisations um, send you emails to say there's news items on your internet to just add to that email load? Okay. So what we're, what we're seeing a move to is more news on internets, which is great. Many years ago, um, it was we could walk into an organisation and say, do you have communications on your internet? And pretty much in a lot of cases, they'd say no. Um, majority of cases now, they say yes. Now, that generally starts with what we call global news. So corporate news, what the corporate organisation wants to push out to you, and that's about it. What we're seeing it moving to now is um, giving you bite-sized chunks of news based on who you are um, and what you want to hear about. Now, um, when I do research in organisations, most people say to me, when I talk to them about communications and say, what do you want to hear about? Things that affect me in my organisation, in my role. Make sense? But I always hear that. Yet, organisations are still pushing out lots and lots and lots of news that's not targeted. So, in the example here for Asiano, um, we had a bit of a fight to say, you know what, the local news is more important. So, those um, in logistics in Queensland, that's the stuff they want to hear first. And then we're going to give them the global news. But there was a fight to get that. But it actually improved readership because people were getting the stuff that they wanted first and then they were reading the rest. And obviously, we've talked about news to mobile. So collaboration, the next purpose of an intranet, helping staff work together effectively. Now, I don't need to tell you that putting in a collaboration tool is going to help people talk to each other. If your staff don't talk to each other now, you will know that this isn't going to help, don't you? Good. Yes? <laughs> Did I have any shaking heads? OK, so um, a great place to start with collaboration in your, um, in your organisation if you don't have collaboration at the moment is projects. Projects have the, some core things that you need to make collaboration successful. They have a defined team, a defined purpose, and some concrete needs. So you need to share the project plan. Um, you need to share project brief and other documentations. You, you might need to collaborate on a few things. Um, and you have that common purpose. Stockland, um, for an ex as an example, they, they're the ones that build the shopping centres. They actually created circles. Now, their circles were around a particular topic. So they had every, all different types of people in their organisation, but they realised a lot of them touched on customers. So they created a circle around customers, which actually got people talking that wouldn't normally talk. Because they had um, a common thread or a common interest. Now, the amount of times I've said to people, so do you have collaboration in your organisation? They're like, yep, we've got Yammer, or we've got X social tool, or we've got SharePoint, or we've got this, or we've got that. So how's it integrated within your intranet? Oh, it's not. It's over here. OK, so how do I know what's in a collaboration space versus what's on the intranet? Well, you don't. OK, so um, there's a small problem there. We need to start integrating the two together. So having a feed, as you've got here, on your home page um, not only shows that, well, actually, yes, we do have Yammer or whatever social tool in our organisation, and look, management are actually using it. That's bubbled straight to the home page. The other side of it is, if anyone, if anyone here is in an organisation um, that uses the S word, um, where collaboration traditionally has been sitting off on its own, how do you actually find that team site again? How do I get there? Oh, someone sent me an email once. That's how I get there. 
Okay, so hang on a second, isn't it really important? Yeah, that's why we do all the stuff relating to our team. Okay, so it's got all our business processes and everything else in it. Okay, so isn't that important? Yep, good, excellent. Integrate it into your homepage. Okay, I need to get moving. Now, British Airways, as you can imagine, um, you're not often on the same flight as someone else. So if you've got a question, what do you do? Well, um, they actually introduced forums where they could ask a question and then jump back on later and see if someone had answered it. There was a problem in first class about not knowing whether the soup, vegetarian soup was made on vegetable stock. Lots of questions around it and no one could answer that question. So they put it up here, um, it was answered and then to make it even better, they said, actually, we're gonna throw this on the chef's chat so that the chefs know that they should really be providing you this information. So that not only got the answer to the question, but it thought about, well, hang on a second, where, how do we close the loop on this? Okay, I'm flicking through a couple because I, wanna, I want, to, um, want to keep going and leave some time for questions. So culture. Now, we are a bit behind in the internet space, I hate to say it, but creating beautiful and engaging intranets. How many of you think you have a beautiful intranet? Please, anyone, anyone? Oh, excellent. I need to get a photo of that. Um, fantastic. So, most of them are really ugly. But at the end of the day, what I want to tell you about culture is that your intranet should depict the culture of your organisation. So if you walk inside your organisation and it feels like GE, very corporate, very official, um, IDEO is a design house, Boopa, I feel like this when I walk in Boopa's doors. They're happy, they're healthy. Um, yes, it does look a little bit like play school, some people think but um, it depicts their organisational feel. It, does, it, it hints on their external culture and their external brand, but it's not all about that. Okay, just showing you a few different examples there. Now, Jumping into the best part of intranets. This is where intranets for me really shine. This is turning your intranet into a core business tool. Your intranet actually helping you. It being that lifeline, it being that thing that works really well in your organisation. And it integrates tasks into the core of the intranet. It's not just about content. It's not just about communication. It's about bringing it all together. So let me show you some examples. Coca-Cola, they decided that they needed to deliver something to their staff that were in the field. Okay, so lots of delivery drivers, we all know what Coca-Cola do. Um, and they said, okay, so really all external staff need is to view their payslip, because yes, they still got it via paper, um, and to actually complete a leave request. Now, corporate wanted to push them some news, so that's okay too. But more importantly, looking at the interface, it's really simple. So they understood that lots of people like taking half days. So let's just put that in. Make it a tick box, keep it easy. They're not asking them to put in any information that they don't absolutely have to. And it's making life so much easier. Timesheets. How many organisations do I see that still have paper timesheets for their staff out in the field? Um, and oops, we faxed it through or I put it in internal mail and it's now lost. So now you have a whole bunch of people in that organisation photocopying timesheets and keeping a hard copy themselves because the rest are getting lost. Now, when I talk to them, they say, yeah, yeah, there's one on the internet and it's a fillable PDF. That's okay, so why don't you print it out? Why don't you do that, print it out? Or, um, because we're, we actually can't print from our tablet devices. 
from our tough books. Right, okay, so that problem wasn't solved. Um, as, uh, as at the keynote this morning, thinking about and looking at the whole process, not just taking someone's word for it. Yes, we've got a fillable form, but what happens to that? Telstra with their me page. So this is bubbling to the surface information that their staff need in the format that they need it. How many leave hours do you have? Um, how, how much are you getting paid? How long until, um, until your next pay? Now, for those of you that are freaking out and saying, oh dear, I, I'm in open plan, I don't want everyone to actually see my, see my pay, by default, it's actually fuzzed out. So it's still on the page, but you can't see it until you click on show pay. Now, I actually really quite like this because it's still there, but all of those that are a little bit sensitive about how much they're getting paid um, don't feel too bad. Now, t back on timesheets, how many hours have I worked this week? How many hours did I work last week? I know how much I was paid last week, and I really need that again. So it's about presenting that information in a way that's consumable to staff. I'm hearing lots more, especially from HR areas, around people saying, well, we've got to get to self-service. We've got to get HR self-service happening. Like, okay, so let's look at your intranet. Right, so there's a whole bunch of PDFs and there's a whole bunch of policies um, and people are still going to keep calling your HR help desk until such a time as you present them the information in a way that they need it. Because it's easier to pick up the phone. You've got to make it easy. If you want them to self-serve, it has to be simple. Um, and these are the, that was the aim at Telstra. And these are the reductions. But I'm talking to another organisation at the moment about this, and they're saying, but can't you just fix the content and the navigation? Well, yeah, I can, but that's not going to reduce calls dramatically to your help desk, because ultimately your processes and your systems still suck. And until you get those fixed, that's why people are calling. Lakewood High School, these were winners of our Internet Innovation Awards this year. A bunch of kids um, doing amazing things. And they've created a simple hall pass system. So um, you can easily see who's out. You scan in and out in your classroom. And if you're a hall monitor, you can see um, in red here who should be back in class. I think they gave them three minutes, three and a half minutes to go to the bathroom. Someone worked that out. I'm not quite sure who. Um, and simply click a button to email the teacher and say, I have this person. I'm now sending them to detention. So they also created a schedule builder. Anyone with kids trying to select subjects, you'll know how difficult it is trying to figure out, or even at uni yourself trying to figure out what's on, what times, what subjects I need, how many of a certain area. They built a simple drag and drop interface that said, well, in science you need three classes um, and you must choose out of these ones, drag and drop. Um, because they're, they're in a school, they found that actually their teachers were filling out lots of paper forms and they had really, really clunky processes. So they said, you know what? Facilities. We're constantly having to complain about a light or something gone in a classroom, so let's just create them a form, a simple online form. Again, remember, we're in the inter enterprise where there are still lots and lots of PDF forms and, and, um, and paper forms. So they also created a bell schedule um, to, to tell what time you needed to be at school, but also for parents to actually see what was due today. 
Now, keeping in the, in the school university space, at Liverpool University, um, they looked at, they, they used to have an Excel looking interface that actually showed what computers were free in what areas and you could book them. It worked, but it was really ugly. So they actually created the PC Finder, where they said, OK, um, I want to find a, find a PC um, close to me. How long is it going to take me to get there? How long is it free for? And can I actually, are there any PCs that are free um, where there's two side by side because I want to work with a friend? So it's really important to get the right balance of the five fundamentals for your organisation. Now, we're not saying that you should all be over here. It depends on who you are, what organisation you're in, and where you're at now. It's about getting that balance between content, communication, collaboration, culture, and activity. Understanding where you're at, and what the future might look like. Getting those fundamentals right first. Understanding the landscape, understanding your business needs, and also understanding your users. And more importantly, delivering an intranet that really shines in your organisation. Thankfully, we're seeing a new level of design in intranets. It's not yet at the web stage. I can't wait for that to happen. But we are finding that intranets are now supporting the business and the work of staff. They're becoming more than just a repository for dead documents. Now, if you want to see more, Everyone likes a freebie. We have free reports on our website. We've got lots and lots of free articles. We commit to writing two free articles uh, every month. So if there is a particular article that you're interested in that isn't on the site, drop me an email um, and either I'll write it for you or I'll get one of my colleagues too. So we also have three books uh, written by James Robertson, my lovely boss. Um, and I have one to give away now, or very shortly, um, to a person who might have sat in the front. Now, you can grab these um, on our online store. If you would like a discount code, I can offer you a discount code again. Just drop me an email um, and I'll give you a discount code if you're interested in purchasing um, any of the books. We also run our community for intranet managers and teams. I know how hard it is. I used to be an intranet manager in a team of one, doing a thousand things, um, and how hard it is to actually know what other people are doing, because intranets are often behind closed doors. So we do offer a community. Um, at the moment, we have chapters in Brisbane, Sydney, Melbourne, and Canberra. Um, if you want to find out more, jump on the website um, or drop me a line. And finally, our intranets conference, um, for those who might be interested, is on in May. Um, I think there's another week left of early bird registrations, um, and it's on in Sydney. So thank you all very much for your time. I think I've probably got time for one question. Um, I really appreciate it. And the person who sat nearest to this card, it might be the gentleman in the white shirt. Is there a card? Oh, no, yep, you. To your right, was there one of these cards? Yes, congratulations. That one is for you. Does anyone have any questions? Um, just wondering, the solutions that you're providing, are they um, focused with Drupal at all, or is it so a specific I, framework? Yeah, I probably should have mentioned at the beginning, we're vendor neutral, so everything that I have presented today um, basically is, is about strategy and design 
of great intranets. So um, there is no reason why you can't create these in Drupal. Yeah, but we don't subscribe to any particular technology. Thank you for the book. That's okay. It's very interesting. Um, uh, do, do you think um, an organization's willingness is a sort of prerequisite? I mean, I work in a place where we have an intranet. It's, it's a, a, a steaming pile of ancient documents. Um, <laughs> and there's, there's no will to make it any better. Yeah, look, I do come across those. Um, what I would say to you is uh, jump on our website, have a look at the Internet Innovation Awards. Um, do a presentation um, to key stakeholders and show them what the possibilities are. What I find in a lot of places where there's not the will is that it might be the type of organisation where people have been for a really long time and they haven't ever seen anything else. So they don't actually know what the possibilities are and they just think, well, why would I fix that steaming pile of documents? Um, because what could you make? How could you make it better? So show them some good stuff, and that might get them excited. Was there one? Oh, OK. Yeah. I appreciate your vendor neutral, which makes sense. But um, can you comment on, of, through your experience, you know, what percentage of those intranets you have used have worked on Drupal? Um, in terms of percentage of intranets that we know that are on Drupal, um, there aren't a lot, to be honest. So if you know of some, please let us know. Um, but yes, there are um, very few that we come across um, So at, at this point. Um, most organisations, the ones that we find that are on Drupal, have that for their website and then sort of say, OK, well, we're going to use it for our intranet as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, we do know that there are some out there. Can I just say I'm a very big fan of step two. I've been um, burgling all of your fabulous uh, information for years. Excellent. Um, um, but just getting back to the platform, yep. is it? would you say that most are on SharePoint these days? Um, again, we, we do see, I've got question? a Vendor Neutral hat on. Um, <laughs> look, we, we do see a lot on SharePoint. Again, that tends to be because someone in IT made an arbitrary decision to say, congratulations, you're now having SharePoint. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> that sounds familiar. But look, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say all. Um, are more, do I come across more on SharePoint than on Drupal? Definitely. Um, in terms of my current and, and foreseeable past uh, client base, probably 50%. But that's my client base, so yeah. Sorry, just a comment really about using uh, Drupal for both your public and uh, internet site. Um, we do that at the National Library and we did it probably partly because we thought that you know, we would just use the same system. Um, but we find it really useful to be able to drive some change through on the internet, get people used to it and then being able to push it to the, um, the, to the public site. And we find having those two sites gives us two places to develop and play on. So we find Fantastic. I want to hear more about people using Drupal with collaboration to, so I might talk to you after. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> They're making you work hard. Um, in terms of collaboration tools, um, what are you guys focusing on? Is, I mean, for example, there's our Fresco, which is a collaboration tool. Um, again, we're vendor neutral on that. Yeah, okay. So what we're basically what we do is we come in and help organisations with intranet um, and digital workplace strategies, and then we will help them with the design um, of their intranet and collaboration tools. Um, we also help people select a technology, but it's in terms of their business and user requirements. So we'll help them get those together, and then they will go out and actually select the tool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we, we're running our, our intranet on Drupal as well. Um, one of the things we, we face, it's, it's, it's a very immature intranet, but um, uh, mostly it's, it's the comms aspect. And so one difference I see between perhaps an intranet and a website is that staff are forced to look at it over and over again 
uh, all day. So I don't know, I'm guessing maybe 10 times a day they'd see the homepage. Uh, and one issue we have, and like I certainly face it, um, so our comms on the homepage, it's totally invisible, invisible to me. I don't notice when it changes. Uh, I'm just wondering if you have any tips around that, how you can actually really draw people's attention to when something has changed. Yeah. Um, so what we what we tend to see in organisations, especially who have had comms on the homepage for a while, um, is people's eye are driven to the banners. So if you have a banner image, a feature story, something like that, that that catches their eye when they go to the homepage. The other side of it is, I would say, the targeting of communications. I don't know if you have any targeting at the moment or whether you just have a block of news. Um, targeting can really help because people will then know that actually they want to go and look and see if it's changed um, because it's, it's pertinent to them. The other side, it's, it is hard in the internal space to use imagery and banners and all that kind of stuff in terms of if you don't have in-house capability to create that stuff, it actually is, is quite an overhead, um, but visually appealing, I would say, yeah, if you can. I think we're now out of time. We might have time for one more quick question. All right, you can shout now. Are you kidding? Okay, oh, that's even better. Um, please join me in thanking Rebecca for a fantastic talk. Thanks very much, everyone.